Well, how do that, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, I've got myself a cup of tea. Heck yes, I do. And I'm going to be doing a No Man's Sky video for you guys in the viewers. Heck yes, I am. A little sip of that. I've also got a Milky Way on the go. I'm going to have a little bit of a jump from my Milky Way. Here we go. Yum, yum. Little chomp on that. Yeah, so people... I've been hit up by Jim's Games Official over on the old Twitter space. Let me just jump on over to the reaction cam. Here we go. I'm over on the uh, Twitter space. So here we go. Jim's Official. He reached out to me. Uh, da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. And he said, look, he put, me, he put this picture out. And he said, Steve, I've just noticed something in the game that could bring you content. I've been watching your videos about the lore around the Void Mother and threats and think i found something not many people have and it's like some sort of weird lookout post i mean look there's him at the top let's just zoom in there he is he's all the way up there look how tall this thing is and apparently it's on top of minor settlements it's just a hunch but have you noticed on minor settlements we now have lookout posts they were not there before the interceptor update you do all the guesswork videos, and it could be a good talking point for you and your subscribers. Well, people in the viewer verse, I had to go and have a look at some minor settlements. So I'm going to jump over onto a PlayStation 5. Boom. Sorry, just swallowing the Milky Way. And I've got my joypad here, and I'm going to be hitting up some footage that I recorded on my PlayStation 5. So here we go, people. I'm just going to talk over it a bit. There we go. Boom. So, you know, this is the whole, hello there, chums, and all that sort of shenanigans. I've got a video for you. I'm going to be doing some investigation into my own settlements. So firstly, I'm going to need some charts. I'm going to need some planetary charts. I'm going to go and see the cartographer chap. But I'm just going to change the game mode into creative mode so I can get myself a whole freaking bevy of the freaking thing. So here we go. Let's just change that. Lovely jolly cup of tea. And then go talk to the cartographer. And the one that I want is the in the habitable chart. So there we go. Let's, uh, let's ask for a specific chart type. And I'm wanting the one that's like um, the little house on it. The red one. I want that one, please. I'm going to take a whole stack. I'm going to have 99 of them. Because why not? It's in creative mode. It's not going to cost me anything. Then I'm just going to change my game setting back to normal. So I do make use of this at difficulty presets every now and again. But there we go. I'm in normal mode again now, people. But I've got 99 charts for free. Heck yes. Lovely jobs. Right. So now we can do the experiment. Now I'm in a Viking system right now. So I'm going to visit two of each of the different races. I'm going to visit two Viking, two Corvax, and two Gag. Heck yes, I am. And I'm going to see if I can find this same outpost that Jim's Games Official has found. Now I know he's done a video on this. And uh, yeah, I saw it in his video and I was like, well, that's pretty darn freaking sweet. Let's see if I can find them. So hitting it up, I will go back to that conversation towards the end of the video. Because I did feed back to Jim that I've had different results to him. And uh, yeah, I'll show you the actual conversation just so it pans out. OK, anyhow, let's um, let's just fly on out and let's go to the minor settlement that I've got inside of this Viking system. Now, somebody inside of Jim's comments on his video pointed out that his planet was a dissonant system and had corrupted sentinels. So maybe that's got something to do with it. However, I do visit a dissonant Viking system in the next visit just to see if it differs the layout of the actual minor settlement. So I do do a thorough test on this. I really do. Now you can see over there by those two parked caravan type little huts, that there is some sort of crow's nest outpost in between the two of them. But it's quite low down. Exactly like the one that's behind this minor settlement. But you can see here, there's nothing on the roof of this Viking settlement that I can see here, people. Heck no. I'd, I'd fly up there just in case it hasn't rendered in. But no, there's nothing there. But there is this crow's nest over here. So there is a lookout post of sorts. But between you and I, people, inside of the view of us, I don't think I've really paid much attention to whether there has been or hasn't been crow's nests at minor settlements before the update or after, to be honest. So, you know, for Jim to spot this, well done, Jim, on spotting whatever you've spotted inside of your iteration. However, I'm not seeing that same crow's nest on top of Viking outposts. But like I say, I'm going to visit every single race and I'll see if there's anything differ. And it differs here. 
However, look at the actual dialogue that this guy reads out. Life on clicks their heels together in an authoritarian fashion. They display a series of holographic images, a reptilian figure and a taller life form in a metallic or metal casing before gesturing aggressively to say that they're enemy types. A reptilian? Is he on about a geck? Maybe. But I don't know. And this taller metallic casing? What the fudge? Could that be the new Sentinel sort of pilots? Maybe there's something that might have changed with some of these dialogues. I don't remember seeing a dialogue like that before. But I actually used my freaking level of Viking. It's actually come in handy for once, people. And I sort of shouted him down. And he offered me a multi-tool, which is pretty darn shite. So, yeah, thank you. But no thank you. <laughs> right, well, on to the next Viking system, people. And we'll see if we get lucky. Are we going to get lucky? Are we going to get a minor settlement that is like the one that Jim has actually sort of alerted us about? We will see, people. And this time I'm going to have a look at a dissonant system, a Viking dissonant system, to see if that has any bearing on anything. Right, so let's look for a dissonant system. Dissonant systems, instead of saying water, we'll say dissonant or dissident. Dissident or dissonant. I, I, pronunciations I'm not very good with, people. Yeah, there we go, here we go. Let's uh, jump on over there. Dissident or dissonant? I don't know. Yeah. Okay, anyhow, so let's jump over there. Boom. Uh, you know what I mean, anyway. You know? Sweet. Oh, I'm going to have a little bit more of my tea, I think, people. Sorry about the chair creak. There's another chair creak, another chair creak. I don't know why my chair started creaking. It never done that. It's only since I got back from the Philippines. I don't think I've put on that much weight. In fact, I weighed myself, people. I've actually lost weight in the Philippines. Right. I guess it's a lot hotter climate, isn't it? And also the food there, it's it's not quite the same as the food here that's sort of like been highly processed, you know? Lovely jubbly. Cheers and thanking you. Cool, yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be uh, using those charts to go and find my minor settlement yet again. But first, I want to find the dissonant system because I don't want to use the charts until I've landed on the planet that is dissonant. Because if you do, you might not go to the right planet. OK, well, that one's got so no, I'm looking for corrupted sentinels in the list. It's usually towards the bottom of the list. I bet it's that moon. Oh, great. Just as I went to blink and scan it, a load of freighters jumped in and uh, wobbled my screen to the point that it didn't bloody scan. Right, oh, okay, well, we'll scan the planet next to it and we'll come back to the moon after all these these uh, freighters are finished blinking doing what they're doing. All right, now let's try scanning the blinking moon again. Here we are. Come on, Mr. Moon. I want to scan thee. Boom. Done, dilly, done. Corrupted sentinels. That is. <laughs> it's always the way. It's always the trickiest to scan that's going to be where you've got to go. Right, oh, well, let's fly on down to this planet. And then we're going to land on the planet, get out the ship, and then use the charts to see if we can find ourselves one of these minor settlements, people. I'm going to take this opportunity to drink a bit more tea. What else have I got in way of food? Mm, I could have another bite of my Milky Way. Here we go. Mm, yummy, yummy Milky Way. <laughs> I do like a good Milky Way. And Milky Bar Buttons. Milky Bar Buttons are lovely as well. Yep, yep. Let's have another one of these. Let's look at this. Let's pop those charts, people in the view of us. Pow! And now, trading post. Cool. Lovely jobs. And um, next one. Let's try again. Boom. Come on, minor settlement. You know you want to be a minor settlement. What have we got here? Minor settlement on the second try. Chicka pow! <laughs> also found a colossal archive in that first system. I didn't go visit it. I do like colossal archives, though. Need to visit those a little bit more often, see if there's any new lore there. But, you know, if there was any new lore, I think it would have been hit up by Kurt or, or somebody to say, yeah, there's been some new lore entries. But. Nothing as yet, people. I mean, we've got a load of new titles that managed to slip in, but a lot of them are to do with glass and the new sentinels and taking out the sentinels and things like that. So I don't think there's anything there that actually alludes to the void or the void mother. I've done some searches inside of the app and nothing's come back anyway. But there we go. Let's touch on down here at this minor settlement. And now I'm not seeing anything 
two grand here in way of outposts or um, looking posts or crow's nests. There is one over there, but it's, it's nothing like what Jim showed in that picture where he was teeny tiny at the top of a giant freaking thing. No, not seeing that, people. Nice little multi-tool there, I guess. But um, nothing, nothing to write home about inside of the Viking systems. But it could be that he was at a different race. You know, it could be a Gex system. It could be a Korvac system. So we'll go and check those out. But meh. There are some little mini lookout posts here, peeps. But if there, if there was some sort of defence mechanisms going on, I would half expect there to be some sort of gun turrets or something, not just like crow's nests. But then again, we are pretty well equipped to take out the Sentinel Scourge, aren't we? So you never know. You never know. It could be on to something. I, I mean, I've already visited two of each of the different races, so I can't hand on heart say that these minor settlements haven't changed. But um, let's press on on. Right, okay, so we've done the Viking. Now let's try doing... Do we do Corvax next, I think, people? Heck yes, let's find the Corvax one then. Yeah, there's a lovely blue colour. Uh, there we go. Oh no, that's pirate controlled. Let's avoid a pirate controlled one. That one's got data unavailable at the bottom. Here we go, we've got one. We've got one. We're going there then, people. Heck yes, locked in. Let's have another sip of the old tea. Hmm. What else have I got in way of lunch? I've got a crunchy or a kinder bar. Hmm. Crunchy or kinder bar. Crunchy or kinder bar. Crunchy or kinder bar. I think I'm going to go for the kinder bar. No, I guess. A little bit of black and white chocolate at the same time. Love it. Cool, yeah. Right, well, now we need to try and find ourselves a minor settlement. So it's just the same process again. I'm going to take a bite of this and have a sweep of my tea. Okay, well, we're at another minor settlement. This one is a Corvax one. And as you can see here, it's kind of like got a weird sort of top bit to it, but it's not a lookout. And I'm not even seeing the two little caravans at this site that usually have some sort of lookout post in between them. Yeah, so this one doesn't seem to have the normal configuration. And it's got this giant freaking post in the middle, and it's got no NPC that offers missions here either. So that's a little bit of a weird one, a lot more condensed than another sort of minor settlement. This one is a minor minor settlement, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a weird one, but no lookout post whatsoever at this one, people. So I, I don't think, I don't think this is a thing. However, let's go and check out one more callback system and see if there's any subtle differences with that one. Let's see if it's got the same sort of strange roof like that one just had. Now I do remember when they done concept artwork of the buildings and they did actually point out that Gek, Viking and Korvax buildings would have subtle differences. Yeah, so that's why I'm visiting two of each, just to be doubly sure. So here we go, we're going to go to another Korvax system. There we go, we'll go to this one. That'll do. Freaking awesome. Have another swig of tea. You know what? This has sort of worked out quite nicely, really, hasn't it? They're doing a cup of tea episode with some pre-recorded footage and just talking over it. Lots of opportunities for me to have a swig of tea, maybe have a bite of something to eat, because this is technically my tea break from work. So, yeah, I've, I've got my work laptop open. I am checking it for emails and stuff. You may hear me clicking on mouses and things like that in the background, because, yeah, very busy at the moment, people. On my way back from the old Philippines, you can imagine. Heck yes. A lot of it is just catching up with emails at the moment, though, peeps. And then I'll get back to my day-to-day -day eventually. Yes. <laughs> Freaking BAU work. Nice. Cool. Anyhow, I'm heading down to the miners' settlement. When I say BAU, that means business as usual. Yeah, my day-to-day. -day. Right, -o. So let's head on down there. We've still got the crunchy to go. But I don't really want to eat the crunchy because it's going to make crunching sounds. Hence the name, crunchy. I've got two packets of crisps, but they're going to make rustling sounds. So I'm going to wait until after I finish this episode and finish off my little mini lunch. And that's all I'm having today, people, is just a very mini lunch. 
then why I'm doing this. So yeah, not a proper lunch break by any stretch of the imagination. Right, so let's head on down to here. Oh, look, and I can already see the roof is slightly different. And it's got the two caravans with no crow's nest in between them whatsoever. Okay, so I'm not seeing crow's nests at every single settlement. So that's quite curious. Still a little bit curious. Oh, actually, no, look, one has rendered in. There's a little mini crow nest right here. It's, it's not massive, but it's still a crow's nest of sorts. I mean, if that was on top of the roof of the actual settlement, then perhaps it would look more like a crow's nest on a, on a lookout post. Oh, that's a lovely creature over there, isn't it? That's pretty darn cool. Right, anyhow. Shall I venture inside? I think I'll venture inside and see if there's a big freaking whacking post in the middle. Or whether it might have some sort of NPC entity inside, peeps. Yeah, let's go do that. I mean, at this point in time, the reason why I'm just standing here and doing very little is my doorbell went. <laughs> Had to run downstairs, open the door. Amazon and delivery, peeps. I'll start moving again in a second, but I'm, I'm just going to have a little swig of the old tea. I don't want to go and try and fast forward it using my joypad. Just in case I go and skip something or, or something weird happens. I'm not too sure on the old controls. I can try. Uh, hold on one second. Here we go. That's a, there we go. We're inside. There is a Corvax chum in there. Let's let's give that a play. Let's see what we've got. Cool. Our entity has been disconnected. Yeah. Nothing, nothing that sort of makes you think, oh, there's something else going on inside of the verse. There's no sort of mentions of other races or the Void Mother or anything like that. But it was quite curious to see that Viking mention two other races. Reptilian and also some sort of metallic casing race. Interesting. Be interesting if we got a mixture of the two, wouldn't it? You know, a reptilian inside a, me a metallic casing. I mean, there has been other lore references like that, hasn't there? Anyways, a little swig of the tea. Right, on to the last system, which is Gek. We're going to a Gek system, people inside the viewers. Chikapow! I nearly finished my tea. It's nearly gone. Okay. Yum dilly yum. So yeah, you can see here, I've gone to town with this investigation. I really have. I'm really trying my best with this one to try and show whether or not um, what's going on. You know what? Why I'm actually just popping up maps and stuff. I'm just going to jump over to my reaction cam and show you the rest of the conversation that I had with Jim. So if I scroll down here, I've actually told him that I've gone to two of each of the different settlements of all the different races. And I said, you know, do you want me to do a video or not? Or do you want me to leave it? I'm pretty concerned that, you, you know, Maybe people might go and unsub from you like they did last time when he asked me to do a video on something else he found. And um, he said, yeah, of course, do a video on it because you do it better than me. And to do, do mentions because I don't mind losing subs. It's the views that I care about. I was very surprised to find it. I think it would give you good content and the community would like the fact that we are working together. So you have my blessing and I can't wait to watch your video. I said, cool, okay, well, I might throw in a little slice of speculation because a Viking chap said something pretty interesting. And I mentioned about the uh, cybernetic races and stuff. So, yeah, Jim reached out to me a little while ago and he sort of offered like a little olive, olive branch to say, Captain Steve, you know, um, I'm trying to make peace with the rest of the community. And, um, you know, I, I just want a, a clean slate sort of thing. And I said, cool, yeah, I, I'm happy to give you a clean slate on all of that. And, um, yeah, so, you know, all the stuff that's in the past, I would like to just say we're going to leave it in the past. And me and Jim, we're, we're back on good terms. So, you know, uh, yeah, check him out. Check out his channel. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything I've got. Oh, I mentioned that I've been using ChatGPT to create my titles, descriptions, and tags. And it's, it's actually working pretty darn well. He said he might give it a try. But anyway, people, that's pretty much everything that I got from Jim. Um, but let's head back on over into the game. So here I am, and this is at a Gek um, settlement. And you can see here, there's no crow's nest on top of the roof. There's this thing over here, but I wouldn't overly say it's a crow's nest. It just looks like some sort of, oh, it looks almost like a water tower than anything. Not, not that it's holding much water in that thing, it's tiny. So yeah, not really impressed by this um minor settlement when it comes to crow's nests and i honestly don't think that ties into what jim has spotted in any way shape or form so a bit of an oddity people bit of an oddity and i tried talking to the gek here not seeing anything overly weird here apart from his um talking about viking devastation and when you actually close your eyes you get to see glimpses of this viking devastation and it, it i guess it's slightly troubling in a roundabout way 
But uh, I wouldn't say it's overly troubling at all. It's um, it is what it is. To be fair, um, there we go. Right, Claudio, and there we go. Yeah. Interesting, but again, I wouldn't write home about it. To be fair, okay, Claudio, lovely jobs. Well, thank you, Mr. Geckman. Right, let's head on out. And we're going to go to one more Gag system inside of uh, the verse. So let's do that. Let's head on up into space and we're heading over to a Gag system. Sweet. Coolio. And galactic map. Have I finished my tea? No, I've still got a little bit left. One more swig left. Let's do that quickly, people. And let's, uh, let's speed this up a bit. Let's just get to the minor settlement. You've seen me jump systems. Let's just get to the minor settlement because I'm running out of tea. Right, there's the minor settlement, and we're flying down to it. Here we go. Right, let's play it from there. Coolio. And here's the last one. And you can see here it's got another one. It's got a couple more of those. They almost look like the Tesla balls at the top of towers, don't they? Whatever those things were that Tesla was working on. Yeah, they kind of look like those. They don't really look like um, lookout towers, let's, let's be honest. And I'm not seeing anything on the roof of this Gek one either. So I'm not even sure what settlement the minor settlement that was that jim was at i don't know whether it was gek viking or corvax to do any more testing but if you guys have seen some outside there in the view of us that you feel actually no jim's got a point i'm seeing the changes too please sound off in the comments or pop on over to jim's channel and onto jim's video where he actually shows one of these settlements in action and and you know maybe hit it up there people and um, put a comment on his video let him know if you're seeing the same or whether you're seeing like i've seen no real change but there we go, peeps. It has been an interesting episode. I have enjoyed doing this investigation. And I suppose there is a talking point around some of the stuff that's going on inside of the verse. I mean, if there is more of a threat coming into game, it would be nice to get more defences for bases. Now, Jim did mention maybe this might mean an, ex an expansion to base parts. And I think he might be on something in that extent. If they do add in more base parts with the amount of different enemies that are coming into the verse, it would not be nice to see maybe some gun turrets added in or something, or some sort of automated defence system or some sort of force field, or something that makes it feel like we're actually worried about the threat that's coming. You know, that could play into it. Anyway, sound off in the comments. Let us know what you think. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. I've nearly finished my tea. I'm just going to have the last week now. Right, well, back to work for me, people inside the Viewerverse. And I hope you're having a good day. Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.